Dear students, in this video, I am going to explain adsorption and partition column chromatography. Here, I will explain methodology, advantages, disadvantages, and applications of these techniques. First, we will go for adsorption chromatography. Simple column chromatography is also known as adsorption chromatography. It involves adsorption of solute molecules on the stationary phase. The separation of sample mixture occurs due to differences in the adsorption affinity of sample mixture components towards stationary phase. Now we'll go for theory of adsorption chromatography. The mixture to be separated is dissolved in a suitable solvent and then allowed to pass through a tube containing adsorbent that is stationary phase. The mixture components who has greater aff affinity, greater adsorption affinity towards the stationary phase will be adsorbed in the upper part of column. And the next component who has lesser adsorption affinity towards stationary phase will be adsorbed in the lower part of column. The mobile phase is continuously added to get distinct separation of these components. Now same thing is explained diagrammatically here. This column is packed with adsorbent and then the solute mixture is added to this column. The solute mixture now here it has two components A and B and mobile phase that is eluent is continuously added to the column. Now the component which has lesser affinity for adsorbent will travel down along with the mobile phase and get adsorbed in the lower part of column. Here the B component is traveling down along with the mobile phase that is eluent because it has less affinity for stationary phase and A component is having more affinity for stationary phase that's why it is adsorbed in the upper part of column. Now in the fourth diagram these two components A and B are separated but the separation is not distinct here because both have same boundary. One boundary is common in between them. So eluent is continuously added. Now in this column in this stage a and B components are distinctly separated. A component has greater affinity for adsorbent that's why it is adsorbed in the upper part of column and B component has less affinity for stationary phase that is adsorbent and that's why it is adsorbed in the lower part of column. Now when such colored bands or such distinct bands are separated the column is known as chromatogram development of the process is and the process is known as development of chromatogram. These colored bands are also known as zones. After development of chromatogram the column is washed with more solvent that is mobile phase and each component is collected at the end of column separately in a beaker. These collected fractions will be analyzed by spectroscopic techniques. Methodology of adsorption chromatography. First step is selection of stationary phase. It depends on nature of solute mixture to be separated. The common adsorbents used are alumina and silica gel. Both are polar in nature. Other adsorbents are starch, inulin, sodium carbonate, calcium carbonate, etc. Generally for non-polar samples, polar stationary phases are used and for polar samples, non-polar stationary phases are used. But most commonly used stationary phase in adsorption chromatography is silica gel. So we will go detail about it. In case of silica gel as stationary phase, it has silenol groups that is hydroxyl group at the surface and they are extended out from the surface in the internal channels of pore structure. These silenol groups will interact with the polar functional groups of solute molecules. Now these silenol groups are of three types. 
बाउंड सिलेनॉल फ्री सिलेनॉल फ्री सिलेनॉल एंड रिएक्टिव सिलेनॉल दीज आर द स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ बाउंड फ्री एंड रिएक्टिव सिलेनॉल ग्रुप्स द नंबर एंड टोपोलॉजिकल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सिलेनॉल ग्रुप विल डिसाइड द एक्टिविटी ऑफ सिलिका जेल If free and reactive silanol are more in number, the silica gel is more active. But if the bound silanol is more in number, then the silica gel's activity is less. Now, next step is selection of mobile phase. Selection of any solvent as mobile phase is based on two factors. First is solvent strength, which controls partition coefficient of all solutes. The formula for solvent strength is adsorption energy upon unit area of adsorbent and the second factor is polarity of solute mixture which is to be separated now generally for polar samples polar mobile phases are selected and no, for non polar samples non polar mobile phases are selected at first the solvent is chosen which match the most polar functional group in the sample for example if the sample has hydroxyl group then alcohols are selected as mobile phase acetone acetonitrile methanol water are having higher solvent strength values with both silica gel and alumina now gas solid chromatography is a type of adsorption chromatography where gas is used as mobile phase now next thing is column packing and working we'll see step by step first step in column packing is selection of proper size glass column selection of proper size glass column next is a cotton plug is placed at the bottom of this column The stationary phase is packed in the column either by dry packing or wet packing method. Stationary phase is packed in the column. Now dry packing means the powder of adsorbent is directly filled in the column and then mobile phase is allowed to pass through it. And what is wet packing? The adsorbent and mobile phase solvent is previously mixed in proper proportion and slurry is prepared. this slurry is kept aside for some time and then it is filled in the column now in dry packing the mobile phase required is more and in wet packing the mobile phase required is less generally wet packing method is preferred after filling the column with stationary phase it is tapped to remove any air bubble now if air bubble is present in the packing of stationary phase then the analysis will not be correct next thing is uh, next step is column should not be dry at any point otherwise it will have cracks now if the column is dried at any point it will have crack and once the column is cracked it will be useless analysis is not possible with cracked column sample solution is then poured or loaded on the column and the mobile phase is allowed to run through the column now the sample is loaded on the column and mobile phase is allowed to run through the column then the chromatogram will develop this is how the column packing and working is there for adsorption chromatography now we'll go for applications of adsorption chromatography first is separation of aromatic or aliphatic non polar compounds such as lipids separation of high molecular weight compounds is uh, most important application in adsorption chromatography separation and purification of nucleic acids analysis of plant pigments analysis of fat soluble vitamins is the application of adsorption chromatography now advantage advantages of this technique it has wide range of mobile phases for separation of compound that means mobile phases more mobile phases are available 
the complex sample mixtures can be easily separated by this method it is a simple and low cost technique now adsorption chromatography is possible manually as well as automatic machines are also available disadvantages the results obtained are not reproducible some compounds uh, may get permanently retained on the stationary phase so these are the disadvantages of adsorption chromatography now we'll go for partition chromatography here the solid molecules partition between two liquids first is stationary liquid and second is mobile phase liquid suppose these are the two liquids and the sample molecule is partitioned in between these two liquids so this is the basis of partition chromatography here separation of sample mixture components occur due to differences in their partition coefficient that is relative solubilities in the stationary and mobile phases the stationary phase is a liquid which is held in the place by coating on a solid support or by forming chemical bond with the solid support that is bonded phases and then this stationary phase is packed in column now suppose this is the solid support and the stationary phase is coated on the solid support and such stationary phase is then packed in the column now this coating is physical coating uh, nowadays chemical bonded phases are also available mobile phase move through this packed column along with the sample molecules now suppose this is the column packed with the stationary phase coated on solid support sample molecules are moving down along with the mobile phase some solute molecules are more soluble in stationary phase liquid so they may lag behind and travel slowly down through the column and come out of the column late now these are the solute molecules which are more soluble in the stationary phase so they get uh, partitioned in the upper part of column and they may lag behind they will travel down slowly some solute molecules are more soluble in mobile phase and they so they may travel fast and come out of the column first now these are the solute molecules which are more soluble in mobile phase that's why they will travel down fast and come out of the column first and that's why the separation occurs now types of partition chromatography liquid liquid chromatography and gas liquid chromatography these are two types of partition chromatography now we'll go for applications of partition chromatography first is to separate and identify amino acids tannins alkaloids carbohydrates glycosides etc to determine water quality identification and analysis of petroleum fractions analysis of pharmaceutical products advantages of this technique any type of mixture can be separated by this technique wide choice of mobile phase is there automation is possible with this technique now automatic machines of partition chromatography are available disadvantages it is a time consuming process more amount of mobile phases required in this case automized techniques are more complicated and expensive so this is about adsorption and partition chromatography i hope you understood all these points thank you for watching